Hello everyone, this is Lindsay. Welcome back to my channel and we have a fun episode today with several different things we're going to be looking at or doing. There's some vintage children's books we're going to be looking at as well as working in our mini junk journal and we're going to be dyeing some lace to use in here and then there's also some marketplace um, journals that we're going to put into the shop. So lots of fun things going on. I want to very quickly start off with some vintage books that are in the shop. These are all under Lindsay's Supplies. So I hope that you enjoy them. They've been pretty popular in my shop lately. And I think that we all enjoy crafting with these adorable vintage book pages. So I'm going to quickly show you these. If you'll take a second to subscribe, if you have not, and give this video a thumbs up, that really helps me out a ton and it will help keep you notified when I create new content. So I'm going to go pretty quickly through these books since this isn't the focus of the video, but I have Baby's Animal Toys. So cute. These are just little vintage books. These pages are perfect for making journal cards, making mini journals. We have Animal Mysteries. Look at these gorgeous wildlife images. Oh, they're so pretty. We have Old Mother Hubbard. These are all in craft condition. They're old. Um, they're not perfect. Craft condition meaning they're, they may even be falling apart or have scribbling or whatever on them or rips, but you can turn them into something beautiful. You can rescue them. We have Gordon's Jet Flight. This is a little golden book and they have really cute images and illustrations. And it is an older one. This is from the early 1960s. And then we have a happy birthday. Isn't that one so cute? This one might be from the 60s as well. Uh, yep, 1960. There's a couple coloring marks in it. But look, there's even some little craft things that you can cut out and do. Look at that. That is so cute. So happy birthday. Hoppy the Curious Kangaroo from 1952. So this would make a really cute uh, children's book journal. And then the little red caboose. And this one is 1953, but it was reprinted in 71, but the illustrations are from the 50s. Then we have Let's Give a Party. Some really cute party images some great images for making journals. A visit to the dentist. And the cover is kind of interesting because it doesn't really tell you what it looks like in, inside. I think this must have been um, reprinted. Yes, because it's a 1959 on the inside, but it was a 1974 printing. So it looks like you're going to have photographs. And then when you open it, you have 1950s illustrations. They're really cute. Then we have Katie the Kitten. Look how sweet that is. And then there used to be a puzzle back here, but that was once upon a very long time ago. It's an old book. We have three little kittens, and this is an old one as well in 1940s. And there's even some old like masking tape. The patina is really old. It's been fixed and aged and that just is gonna look great in a vintage children's journal. The Mary Shipwreck, really cute, 1950s. So cute, bright and colorful, make great collage images. And we have an Alice in Wonderland. Um, 1951. Yeah, that's an old version. So really cool to have one that old. Beautiful back there. The Night Before Christmas from 49, 1949. Isn't that beautiful? Look at these. Before you know it, we're going to be getting our Christmas crafting going. So look at that. isn't that beautiful? And then Raggedy Ann's Merriest Christmas. And this one is 1952. Really cute if you love Raggedy Ann. So all of those are in the shop. I'm going to get these out of our way so we can move on to the next part. So we've been working in this sweet little journal that Claire made me. 
and it has a lot of coffee dyed pages. It's just a little trifold journal with a little brown lace closure, and we're just playing in it, trying different things, turning it into a completed work. So um, I received this in some happy mail. This, oh, I wish, I thought I, I kept who it came from. Maybe I didn't, let's see, is this it? So I actually don't remember, but it was a recent. And I loved the collage. I loved the lace sticking out here. And I thought it may really, it's about the size of this cover. It may really jazz up the cover. If I just angle it enough so you see that, like that. And then the lace, and then you would tie it closed. So you could, it's a journal card, but I really think that this is going to be a good cover image. So we're going to get our glue, which I have right here. I'm using Eileen's Easy Squeeze Quick Dry Tacky Glue. I highly recommend the Eileen's that come in the stand-up containers. It does not dry out. It's easy to use and then pop right back into the container. I prefer this over pretty much any glue. And it's been a while since I've used it, so... I'm just going to use, this is actually like a little dental pick I'd gotten from Walmart, but it works great for die cuts and also for cleaning out glue nozzles. When you have a journal card or an image that has been stitched, adding glue, well, wow, it's been a long time since I've used this and I sure hope it has not dried up. It's starting to come out. It's a problem with glue kind of has a shelf life and if you don't continue to use it it gets harder and harder to use all right we're getting somewhere we're getting somewhere I don't know why it's so it's got to be in that nozzle I'm thinking if I grab a oh, what is this a paper clip and I open it up maybe I can get down in further and clear that gunk all the way out twist it around a couple times there we go let's see if that helped hopefully all right so if you have stitching Putting the glue onto the stitching really helps with the grabbing of the glue. I've noticed um, that is my favorite place to apply glue. It's working a little better, but not as great as I would like it to. I have yet to find a glue that works perfectly in every circumstance and situation. Uh, it either dries out, it gloops, it isn't strong enough. Anyway, we will make it work because that's what we do. All right, I'm gonna pretty much center it on here and I'm going to press it down. If you made me this lovely tag, would you please comment in the comments below? I really wish I could remember, honestly, any more with staying home and trying to get the boys schoolwork done and everything else. So I feel like I can't remember anything anymore unless it is vital to survival. It goes in one ear out the other doesn't stick. If anybody else feels that way, let me know it. it I just can't keep my thoughts. So I really don't remember who this was from and I apologize, but I loved it so much. I set it aside to use it in this journal. So that is like our new cover image here. Isn't that beautiful? I just loved how the lace floated down here. Now we had already, she had added a little bit of lace onto some of the pages, but I thought it would be nice to add a little more lace. So I grabbed some white, cheap white lace I got on eBay. And the one thing about white lace is you can get tons and tons of it for super cheap. I was looking on Amazon the other day and you could get um, yards and yards and yards of white lace, super cheap, but then it's just this cheap white color, right? And while that's okay, sometimes we want, um, we want colored lace. And so I searched for colored lace 
mm, didn't find a whole lot. And what I did find was definitely more expensive. And then you have to buy it in all of the different colors that you want it. So I thought that I would experiment with dyeing it myself. Now, um, we can do when we're coffee dyeing, we can stick the lace into it and dry it out, things like that. But I don't do much coffee dyeing anymore. I have been using tan copy paper and stencils and things like that. I haven't, not that I don't want to do it anymore. I'll never do it again. I just haven't been taking the time to do it. And so, yeah, I haven't. So I figured what can I do that's easier. I'm going to use this as just as a protective piece of paper here. So I grabbed um, a water bottle. I grabbed some distress ink. I figured I have a lot of different colors of ink. Maybe I could ink them up. I grabbed one of these uh, makeup brushes and I'm going to use just, these are from the Dollar Tree. They're little plastic palettes and I like to put distress ink and things like that in there. All right, so what I'm going to do is spray the water into one of those. When I did it over on my craft desk, I'm in my filming room right now. Oh, I haven't even turned the lights on. What is wrong with me? Hopefully you guys have been able to see, but let's make it even brighter. <laughs> I just used my Tim Holtz glass media mat, but I didn't bring it in here. So this works as well. So I'm gonna try Victorian Velvet. I'm gonna show you in a minute two little packs I put together for my shop where I've dyed some stuff and I put together whoop, little um, packs. But we're gonna take this simple white lace and see if we can turn it into something else. So I'm going to just get this ink onto my brush. I'm gonna tap it in the water and then I'm just going to paint it on the lace. This works better on the mixed media mat, but I think it'll work all right here too. Now, Victorian Velvet, if you don't have all of Tim Holtz's colors and you're not familiar with Victorian Velvet, it is a very light, kind of grungy, pinky mauve color. And that's exactly what I'm going for with the little journal we're working on. We were using my parts of my kit called Abandoned Beauty to decorate the journal. And this color is very prevalent in that kit. So I thought I would just work it out. You could probably use a paintbrush um, if you didn't have, or some kind of a sponge if you did not have a makeup brush. I really like the makeup brush because... I've found, oh, I don't want to get too much water in my ink pad, but I've found that I can easily just brush it on there and it works really well. I'm really wanting some kind of plastic. Oh, I've got an idea. All right, let me pull this out. So this is the backing from shipping labels. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because what's happening with my cardstock here is it's getting too wet and it's going to start making a mess. So we're going to put that aside. This is just like sticker backing from a label sheet. And that way it won't absorb the water. Another thing with the Distress inks is they react with water. So they turn into a really lovely kind of watercolor. I hope I'm in frame. I'm going to take a peek here. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. They turn into a beautiful watercolor like this. That's really, you can grab it up, paint it on, really easy to work with. I am sure that you could play around with other kinds of um, inks. I would not go out and buy Distress Ink if you don't have it until you've tried what you already have, because I'm pretty sure you could paint on different kinds too. And so we just continue down the entire thing of lace here.
And I love how you can see the detail in the lace as it picks up the color. I've done this with Stormy Sky and Faded Jeans, and you'll see those in just a minute. This is my first try with the Victorian Velvet, and I just like, it's just very light. All right. It's gonna take a while to do this whole piece, so I think we've kind of got the idea. We're gonna cut it off where we left off. And the other thing I do is flip it over and make sure that it's dyed on both sides. This one actually picked up the dye really well on both sides. Some of the lace, it doesn't seep through as well, and you kind of have to go back in and accentuate both sides with the ink. So it is going to be slightly damp. It's not sopping wet. It's just slightly damp. Put everything over to the side here. And it will dry in just a few minutes, but I'm not gonna worry about it being damp for our purposes here. Okay, so I have to decide how much, many paces, paces, <laughs> pages do I want lined with this lace? Oh, it's going to be so pretty. All right. Now, I wish I had my hot glue gun available, but I'm pretty sure that this glue will work okay. I'm just going to lightly put a line of glue along the edge. I could sew... Uh, stitch the lace and then glue it on that way as well, but this works really well. Look at how pretty that is. Just a very light pink. It goes really well with the journal. I'm not going to do every page, but I really think that some of these pages will do well with a lace accent. So maybe if you're trying to save money, look on Amazon or AliExpress or someplace where you can get white lace really cheap and then practice inking it in just different colors so that it can match whatever project you're working on. And that way you don't have to buy colored lace for every project. I thought that was a really good idea. I'm pleased with it. I know we have not worked in this journal for, I want to say, it may have even been a couple weeks, but at least a week to two weeks. But life is crazy around here. I'm just trying to stay on track as much as possible and got caught up a little bit on some of my digitals over the weekend. I had kind of, I'm uh, am like a brand ambassador or whatever you want to call me for Design Cuts. It's a wonderful, wonderful website. And I'll be happy to send you like a referral link or something if you would like to join um, to get beautiful, beautiful digitals to work with. But I had four projects to get done. I had only had one done. And I had to whip those out over the weekend. I really enjoyed that, though. Some really great botanical things that I've added to my shop. All right, I love that, so pretty. I have a little piece left and I'm trying to decide, maybe we'll stick it on the front. Do I want it on the front? Yeah, like right there. And we will layer up more on the cover on another video, but we do wanna to get to these marketplace journals before the end of the video. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that gives you some ideas for easily inking up different colored lace. All right, I'm gonna set that back away and I'm gonna show you the two little packs I have in my shop. I have this one. Okay, open it up. Oh, it's so pretty, I love this one. Okay, so I've curated this over the weekend. The piece of fabric that you get, I've actually stenciled on the fabric with Distress Ink. So you have this beautiful piece of fabric and it's got some blues and pinks, um, these kind of a diamond, it's a Tim Holtz stencil. But I thought that would be really, really neat for 
using in your journals. And then you get a piece of, this is a thrifted curtain uh, piece, but it has this gorgeous floral embroidery, everything curates and matches. And then I've dyed this piece of lace. Isn't that pretty? It was white and now it's this really pretty pink. And then this piece of green lace, and this is cool. I didn't even realize this happened, but they were damp when I set them on top of each other. And this green lace picked up a little bit of the pink. So you got spots of pink in it. I think that's really neat. And then two pieces of, well, and these got dyed a little bit too, but that's really cool. Of this is Indian like boho fabric uh, pieces and trims. And then they've got a little bit of that dyed color as well. This is a gorgeous seam binding. I didn't dye this. The color was just so perfect to go with this. And then a little bit of this kind of, I don't know what it is. It's like a gnarly crocheted. It's really, really great to use in on tags or in tassels. Then we have this piece that we lost our little rhinestone. This little piece of trim that I thought would look beautiful on a cover and I've added rhinestones. And then you can also dye things like, I had these white flowers on a trim. So I cut them off, separated them, glued on a pearl and I've inked them up with the stormy sky ink. And then there's, I think there's 20 of these little pink clear, pink, clear pink. <laughs> They're like a translucent pink buttons that go really well with all of this. So I thought it would be beautiful for somebody to use in a journal. So that's that one set that I've put together. And then I have one more set that has more blues than pinks in it. Right here. So you get a piece of sari silk fabric and it is a border piece. So you have this really pretty border. And then I've stenciled this piece of fabric. So that really adds grunge and interest to it. This is great for pockets and for layering. And then I found this piece of lace. Isn't that pretty? Like trim. I didn't dye that. I just thought it went really well. I have a piece of sari silk ribbon. I didn't dye this either. I got this from Victorian Gypsy Girl, I think. That's where I got it from. I don't remember. But really pretty color. This one I didn't dye either, but I just trying to curate the colors here. And this one I did dye. This is with the faded jeans. It's white. It was white. And now it's this really pretty um, musky blue color. And then the flowers I've done in the faded jeans as well. And then you get 15 mixed like uh, gray and blue type uh, ish buttons. So there is that one. All right, let's take a look at some Marketplace journals. So my Marketplace is a section of my website where I sell artist journals. If you are a journal creator and you'd like to get a little bit of money for your creations, then contact me. I have an email below. I'll be happy to send you guidelines. But we have a couple of artists we're looking at today. Um, we're going to start with Marlene. And she sent me this piece of fabric. Isn't this gorgeous? Thank you so much. I can't wait to figure out an amazing project to do with this, but it is so lovely and it's going to go in my fabric collection. I love it. So we're going to start with Song of the Sea right here. And it is, um, she's used some of mine, Ocean Music, Beauty of the Earth and Washed Ashore, and then some Artie Mays and Amy Joy Studios. I love the lace on it. It's fabric uh, covered to signatures. We have some charms down here. Really, really feels good in your hand. So we to dance of the mermaids. So yes, I think it is definitely about time to start thinking about our summer journals. And oh, how pretty. So it's kind of beachy themed, mermaid themed. We have from my ocean music, from washed ashore. 
you can just type those into my website if you're interested in pulling them up and purchasing them. This is from Ocean Music as well. She's got some gorgeous paper choices for sure. Look at that. Got a tag in there. The octopus paper is from Wash, or not Wash to Shore, from Ocean Music. This spread is also from Ocean Music. I think that was a kit from two years ago. I love what she's done. So pretty. You got seashells and seahorses. This is from Ocean Music too. She's put in little music pages. There's a little postage stamp. This one's mine. I'm guessing that this one is from, well, you've probably Artie Mays. This one's my background as well. I love seeing multiple different kits together. Really adds a eclectic feel to it. That's Amy Joy. I can just tell by the style. Really pretty. I just love what she's done. Little fabric ruffle. Perfect with there's so much space in here where you can so easily journal, keep your memories. It would make an excellent gift. And in the back here, she's made a little mini booklet. And a, I think this is a vintage postcard. Isn't that gorgeous? Looking for a year. I don't see a year, but it is totally gorgeous. So Song of the Sea, that's what this one is called by Marlene. Love your work, Marlene. I'm a huge fan. All right, I'm going to set that aside. Okay, this one is from Marlene too. It's called Summer Memories, and she's used my kit in my dreams. She's used Christy Art Design postcard boards. Love Christy Art Design. Highly recommend her Etsy shop. Mrs. Cog's Crafts uh, Mountain Flowers. Also highly recommend Mrs. Cog's. I have um, bought from both of their shops and their prices are amazing. Their quality is amazing. Check them out. Oh, look at how gorgeous. So two different kinds of fabric there with that trim. Oh my goodness. Look at those colors falling in love with this one so in the front it says from the library of and then she has suggested uses what a beautiful beautiful journal this is in my dreams I think yeah there's some light filtering coming through the window on here it's really bright outside and I have a little filter to keep most of that away so that you can actually see but there may be shadows some vintage postcards here. Gorgeous. Got some, I love the size of this too. It's five by eight and three quarters. So these are probably Christy Art. I love everything she has in her shop. I've ordered a couple things from her and her prices are incredible. You could use them over and over again in your journals. I like what she's done here with vintage, but then she has bright and cheery as well really cute. We have some postage stamps, different scrapbook papers. This is from In My Dreams. That's one of mine there. A, a fabric ribbon. Look at how pretty that is. It's like, I want this journal for summer. There's a fabric journal card. You can write on the back. Some dyed paper in that pocket. And then really pretty like, card front in the back. So this one is Summer Memories. So pretty. It's very, um, the cover is very understated. Makes it so lovely. Okay, so there's that one. Then she has, and I'm going to list these as a set. Sweet and Sassy, and then this is a Sweet and Sassy Mini. But she's used um, Authentique Paper Pad, it looks like. So they're cherry, isn't that cute? All right, let's 
see what we got here. So cute. So she's used some of the authentic paper pads, which I love at authentic. I just think they're really creative and clever. Soap and glory. I love that. It's like packaging. Get the little mini card. I think she said these are mini playing cards from Germany. Oh, look at how pretty. 1965. See how she has different colored laces on the edges here? It's nice when you can dye them so that they can look like that. We have some play money from a game. So sweet. It's like kind of fashion, kind of vintage, kind of modern, eclectic, very girly. Um, it's a great mix. And I'm going to put it with the mini. So you can either keep one, give one, or keep one at home, use one in your purse. Let's see what the little one looks like inside. Very similar, just a teeny tiny version of it. There's some of those little playing cards. There's a little dangle. Very cute. So those go together. And I think that's all we have from Marlene. I have one other artist. I'm pretty sure. Let's set this aside and take a look. I'm not sure who these, I don't remember who I grabbed. So this is a single signature. I love that paper. Might be Tim Holtz, I'm not sure. Got a little label there you can write something on. Okay, this is from Priscilla. So Post Crossing Travel Journal. Oh, she's used Postage Do. That's one of my kits. So it's kind of like a travel journal, post office journal. Look at her tabs. Some of them have eyelets on them and charms. I think this would be great for a happy mail junk journal. If you like to receive and send happy mail, you could put down um, things that you get in your happy mail, maybe make a note. You can say the date, who you got it from, maybe put a washi tape sample, some stickers, uh, clip on a journal card that came in that. And then maybe if you've created things to send as well, this is a little wallpaper pouch. This is from Postage Due. Then you can add what you've sent to. Because it's really fun to keep some of the beautiful things we receive in Happy Mail. Sometimes we can't keep track, as you've seen, what, uh, who sends everything. And that would be a really beautiful, beautiful. Or you could write, use this, write a bunch of letters to somebody in it and send it all at once, like a giant letter, maybe you know, fill it up over three months time and then send it as a gift to somebody. So that is gorgeous. And then she created this one as well. Very pastel, very beautiful. We have a bird, we have a butterfly, we have some dangles. This is from Priscilla as well. And it's called Blooms and Butterflies. Really pretty die cuts on that journal card. Some really pretty charms and edging. Make sure I'm kind of in frame here. But we got some really pretty stenciling, pages to write on. Some nice journal cards. There's a clip. That's a gorgeous piece of paper. The little Tim Holtz dies there. Little Edith Holden. journal cards in here as well. Little wallpaper envelope. Some little goodies. I love this paper. It's from a book. <clears throat> Excuse me. A bird book. Some stickers in the back that you can use. Very sweet. And I love the label. Again, you could put the year, the month, your last name, maybe a, a short message to someone if you give it as a gift. And then the last journal we'll be looking at today is also from Priscilla. It's this beautiful purple one. I love her little faux corners here. It's a lace and cardstock. Again, a label. It's this piece. 
beautiful cardstock. So lovely. This is from her as well. It's called Peaceful Lilac. Look at what she's done here. I love this idea. So she's taken a blank library card and instead of stamping on it or something, she has glued down some die cuts. That is an incredible idea. I love that idea. Some tags and journal cards. I love the sweet purple colors here. Look at the edging, all of this lace. Isn't that gorgeous? I hope everything's coming through the camera all right. Look at how pretty that is. I love just how she adds a die cut. That's something I need to remember. Just the simple little flower die cuts. Look at, she's done it here again. It just really puts a second level to it. Little wallpaper pouch. So cute. Oh, being called away and I'm back. I'm surprised they played happy as long as they did. Just had to go in there and send one of them back to doing his homework and the others to calm him down. So here's some little bags and some little sweet tags in each one. I love that idea of the bags. That is really sweet. Little labels. There's a die cut, little quotes. I love this journal. This is so pretty, Priscilla. She's added stuff, but you have so much space to make it your own. Beautiful tags, journal cards. Look at those tags. You're giving me a lot of ideas here. There's the die cut again. So pretty. A fairy postcard. Isn't that pretty in the back? Fairies go really well with this theme. I love it. Well, we certainly covered a lot today. I really wanted to split it up into different videos, but that takes a lot of time. My internet, if I had really fast internet, then I could do that, but um, I don't have good internet. Just a minute, buddy. Um, I don't really have, oh, they're calling me away. So I am going to end this video and I'll see all of you later.